to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We may have a motion to approve the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. We'll move on to new certified staff candidate introduction, and we'll turn it over to Rick. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Uh, we have with us D. Koshin. D's in the front row there. Um, D will be uh, teaching at Pine Tree for us. Um, she has spent some time at Pine Tree. We, we convinced her to come over and be a long-term sub for us back in October. Uh, she spent some time there, and um, she's currently serving in a long term for a uh, someone who's off on a leave, covering a classroom. But she'll be official uh, Pine Tree next year as a awesome. new staff. Got some experience as a former middle school math teacher, oh. and uh, she went to Pine Tree. And I don't want to speak for her, but she says she fell in love with the kids there, and uh, is happy to to be going back. So we welcome Dee. Awesome. Welcome. Right, welcome. welcome. As I said, you don't have to stay. <laughs> She's got a soccer game to get to. Actually, two of them. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Guys. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. More good news. So move on. Mark, please. Uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, just starting off with communications. Uh, everything is going well. I've been spending a lot of time in buildings around the district. Uh, Today, actually, I was down and saw the new football storage building. Or not, I'm sorry, ath the <laughs> athletic Athletic. football slash band storage building uh, next to the Dragon Stadium. Um, it's complete, and it's great. And Wes uh, has guided the team to do a great job <coughs> with that. And it, it's really, it's, a, it's something that was much needed. And Heidi's talked about that before, how important it is to for all of our people on that campus who have outdoor items and things associated with the football games, and things associated with band, all different things. And it gives a lot of opportunities to have that nice storage building. So it's uh, ready to go. And we posted some pictures of it today. And again, it's from the bond, which we appreciate the community's support on that, um, as well as our partners. Uh, the One note, the high school musical was scheduled to be this week, but uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, it's going to be pushed to next week. So uh, everyone can go on to the high school webpage and buy tickets online, and they'll be sold at the door. So just wanted to make that clear. And for those who already have tickets? I'm sure they will be there'll honored. There'll be a notification? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, they'll, be, they'll be honored, I'm sure. Um, in terms of uh, learning highlights, I guess we'll be out here. Thank you. Uh, I guess we'll start with, you know, there's a lot of Earth Day things, so you'll see a bunch of those things. And I think that the idea of our community, our school community, our students are learning about the environment and about what they can do for it is great. Uh, Pine Tree Center, for example, they had this, the phases of students out there getting their hands dirty and getting in there and cleaning up their school and beautifying their school. I think part of what was presented to them was that, you know, they're cleaning the flower beds and replanting the flower pots, that this is their school and they have some ownership, you know, in making it beautiful. And that was uh, very important. So that was nice. Um, Lyndon Potter is a he's the journalist of the broadcast journalist of the year, the singular, the num number one chosen by um, the Michigan Interscholastic Press Association. And it, it's really, Roger Smith is the advisor and obviously he's built a wonderful broadcast program at the high school. And Lyndon's commitment has been great. I remember he's been basically everywhere. Uh, I remember going downtown, seeing the uh, the, Uni the unified team play basketball at Little Caesars. He was there. That was a Saturday afternoon, and he's done quite a bit to show that commitment. And he also received a scholarship for that, a $500 scholarship, and that's something that uh, Mr. Smith has been great about sharing that with the community and everything. So that's congratulations to him. Jennifer Heck is a teacher at Bland Sims Elementary, and uh, she challenged her students to read 7,500 minutes in March, and they, wrote, they read 10,000 minutes. So she dyed her hair with the purple, and she <laughs> said in her tweet that it'll probably be that way for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Mr. Burden, you know, we talk, we've talked many times here about his connection with the students and how valuable that is, and we're so lucky to have him. You know, he posts these occasionally with, you know, these con lunch conversations he has with the students, and they really engage with him, and it's an opportunity. You know, we've talked a lot about you know, mental health this year and social-emotional learning and connecting, you know, with students and letting them have a voice, and he really brings that out of them, and I think that these are he deserves to be recognized for that and uh, these opportunities that the connections he has with students and I'm sure the students who are here can attest to Mr. Burden's you know connections so um, the, this is this was the traveling week for uh, our students across the country the robotics team was at the world championships in Houston and they did a great job and they they performed well and the DECA which is the young business professionals uh, group they were in Atlanta, and they're posing in front of the arena there. So, um, they, and they did really well too, reaching the championships of theirs, the national championships. And I think that what it shows is, you know, again, the diversity at at the high school. There are spots for everyone to do all different things that suit them, and and our teams are performing well. That's a testament to our staff and our students' commitment. So, um, Earth Day, Sarah Perry at. Oakview had a brainstorm a couple months ago um, when there was a power outage and someone said something about glow sticks and it struck her, well, maybe this is a way to conserve energy and we can do that for Earth Day. So that's what they did last Friday. And they had the lights off throughout the school and kids had glow, students had glow sticks and some teachers did too. Um, and, you know, it was kind of the symbolism of the idea. There's a lot of light in the building, so it didn't really affect their work as much, but it was kind of the idea and the fun. Even in the music room, you know, they were able to, you know, play their music and everything in the quasi-dark, which I thought was a very creative way to uh, recognize Earth Day. Sorry. It's okay. Um, this is what Carpenter's doing this week. It's a theme, they're doing theme days, the first day. And Teresa West is one of the teachers there and she's gotten really into it. Um, the first day was the 20s and then yesterday was the 50s. Today was the 70s. There's been some great pictures. So, uh, you know, it's nice when our students are able to like, they get to learn about the decades and the fashions while they're trying to, uh, you know, learn. And the teachers are, when they engage, then the students want to engage too. So that, that's great. Uh, this is coming up this weekend. The, uh, L the LOCS band directors, Mike Steele from the high school, Dakota Cooper, Alessis Jarrison, Eric Crimmins at the three middle schools, and Abby Reynolds, who works in the elementary level, are going to be performing themselves. You know, they don't just teach it. They can perform as well. And they're going to be performing at Clarkston this weekend with the Southeastern Michigan Wind, Ass Wind Ensemble at 3 p.m. at Clarkston. It's free. So if you can want to swing by and want to hear their beautiful music, that would be wonderful, and I'm sure they would appreciate that. So This is something that's going to be occurring on Friday at uh, Oakview. They have the DTE Foundation selected Oakview to receive for Arbor Day 20 mature trees, and they're going to be planted in a big ceremony there on Friday morning. And, uh, it, and some of the students were making some plaques for it in preparation for it. But it's, it's a really great honor for Oakview. Obviously, those trees will be, will be, <laughs> take, will be great in terms of the drive. They're going to go up the drive and really change the look of Oakview in the front there, and which is really nice because there's not a lot of you know, trees in the front of the building, and that's going to be a great opportunity. And it's going to be a big thing. I mean, for the DTE Foundation, they've given these grants around the state, but this is the only school in the state that's going to get it. So mm -hmm. that's really... A, Unique and uh, credit to Sarah Perry, you know, for pursuing this and uh, making it happen at Oakview, the principal. Um, this is this is Angles in or or in Oak Elementary. You can see it's like a billiards table. Online, um, Francie Robertson, who's <coughs> always been one of our trend-setting teachers, you know, found this online and she was able to, you know, kind of find the connection, um, creating real-world three-act tasks. They were predicting about where the balls would bounce with, and using their angles and real world opportunities there and kind of seeing how that all unfolded. So that was nice. Uh, spring sports are continuing. That bottom one is spring. We all remember <laughs> last Monday, um, Stan Ford, oh, yeah. our track coach, got them out there and running, and he made some uh, 
a couple wisecracks on Twitter about them not staying in their lanes, and uh, but you know I think that it was a great, a great picture. I was out there watching them run today, and it was a totally different experience. Yeah, even in the cold, they didn't have the snow. At the top um, track, track team, the boys team won the Brandon Invitational, and they had their their depth was important. And then we just got a box score up there, but Matthew Whitefoot from our team threw a no hitter against Garver. Oh, nice. This week, so uh, and they're off to a great start. Andy Shramick's team is is really doing well, and uh, so that's a early season, especially that's really an impressive feat. So it's a great start. And then finally, the career day w was able to resume a couple years ago. Uh, at the high school, Rosa Everett had created a career day, and it was local individuals who came in and spoke. And there was maybe I don't know 30 students there, you know, it was, and there was probably equal number of professionals. Well, this this Tara Hall, who's there now, and working in the career center, she created this partnership, and Oakland schools helped as well. That it became. To all the schools, all the whole school at once, 2,200 students were all engaged with professionals from around the country because it was virtual. So they, so for 45 minutes, every class was engaged. What students were sitting there and engaging through the smart boards with hearing a presentation, and uh, you know the opportunity to engage. And they asked, they got the presentation, and then they got to ask questions after. And in a couple of classrooms, you know, some students would stand up and talk directly to the screen with the Zoom. These are things that weren't possible, you know, in our district a couple of years ago. And obviously, you know, the pandemic has hit us hard in a lot of ways. But this is one of the great things that has emerged from it. And I know Heidi's staff and the whole teaching learning department has found ways to incorporate you know, the online. We saw Francie Robertson in the other, in just, you know, a couple slides ago, and now you see this as well. So I think that's everything. Any questions? Uh, questions for Mark. Okay, thanks so All much. Good news. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Move on to high school leadership class. Welcome, ladies. All right, well, thank you. This evening we have Savannah and Grace from the leadership class, so thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Yes. Okay. Thank Is this you. Quicker? Oh, yeah. oh, cool. Okay. Okay. So this week, um, these past few weeks, we just started our quarter four with our new e board. So that was a lot of fun, and we've just gotten the new committees all set. Yeah. So um, we're gonna be like switching off. Yeah. So for El Alado, um, they recently just helped out with cultural outreach. They had their diversity, equity, and inclusion week this week. So um, for three out of the four days, I'll show it on the next slide. But um, they um, helped out and passed out tickets at lunch to win a prize to help support cultural outreach. Um, they also create all the themes every Friday so that shows unity within our school. So everyone can, um, like, I guess, dresses up to whatever theme that we have. Um, advertising has been creating posters for all of our other committees, like prom. They created the poster for the prom tickets that are going up next week. Um, and then they also created a poster, I think, for um, Night at the Oscars. Um, Prom Wars created their tickets, and um, we have all of them labeled. Senior tickets will be sold next week, and then um, the following week, at, week after that, junior tickets will start being sold. And then Prom Wars has just been creating um, all their games. So Prom Wars is basically... Um, where seniors and juniors get to compete in different games, and the um, top four people with like the most points after get a free prom ticket. So that's pretty cool. Yes, and then for Dragon Day, it'll be coming up on May 10th, and this quarter we'll be having Carpenter fifth graders come to our school for a few hours to play three fun activities, and then they'll eat lunch with us. So they're currently planning that. And then for Girls' Night Out, will be happening soon on a Sunday. I can't remember what day it is. But um, it's third through fifth graders will come in and play a few games. For And the committee is planning that currently. For senior, senior activities, they'll be planning um, the senior breakfast and also helping pass out the senior signs and then caps and gowns. And then, did you want to play? Yeah, I can do SOS. Okay, so SOS and team building. So actually today they um, planned this amazing lesson for the whole class, and they did it today. It was about communication. So um, basically, like every other Wednesday, they're going to be planning um, cool team building things to do with the whole class. Um, 
And then there, um, when SOS week comes around, they'll be helping out with all of that and um, helping Miss Redmond plan it. Yes, and then for Night at the Oscars, they're currently planning um, like the Oscars for our school and people will be able to nominate others. And on Night at the High School, they'll be able to give out awards for like yeah. those. Nominations close tonight and yeah. voting will start, I think, on Friday. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, so this is Earth Day cleanup. Um, so in honor of Earth Day, we went out um, and we cleaned up around the school. Um, we took pictures with all like the crazy things that we found. So it, I don't know if you can see it, like the notice sign up in the right corner. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just split off into groups and um, went out and cleaned all of it up. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually our cultural outreach week currently. Today was um, where like a club or something you're passionate about, like a sport. So this has been going on all week just to wear, uh, raise awareness to all the different cultures. And Mrs. Curitan has asked us to help like spread the awareness. Yeah, so you can see El Olato yes, handing El out Lato. tickets, and then all of us wearing blue. Yeah, that was on our Earth Day yeah. cleanup, so, so we're all wearing orange our vests jackets, too. Yeah, our little vests. Okay, so awareness boards. We did these last week, um, basically just to uh, raise awareness about about certain topics. So Mrs. Curitan actually asked us to do two boards. So on the bottom right is one of the boards that um, we did for her. Um, it's about Islam. So um, yeah, and then obviously Earth Day and kind and uplifting words, <laughs> and then the masters. So these were just some of our favorite ones from last week. And then lastly, we just helped out at the Weber Elementary Extravaganza. Tyler Ratliff was wearing the Easter Bunny, so uh, <laughs> I know all the people who went to help out. It was a lot of fun, and they all had a good time with yeah. the kids. Tyler needed someone to, like, walk him around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, he said he almost tripped, like, multiple yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. <Calm down>. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good time. He yeah. made it out alive, so no <laughs> Okay, so that's yep. it. Yeah, that's it. Thank, right. you. Great, Thank you. Great news. Any questions? No, that was awesome. Thanks that's for fantastic. being here. Well, I got a Thanks, Chris. I got a comment. That Go right well, later in the meeting, we're, we're going to take up our mission and vision of the district. And the vision that we're proposing is empowered dragons experience joy and success. And when I hear about the extravaganza, girls, girls Night Out, Dragon Day, that's the great thing that we like about Lake Orion is we're all dragons, and the leadership class does an outstanding job of working with those younger dragons to show them where they're headed. So appreciate all the things that you do. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Us. Thanks, girls. Good evening. It's a full docket of activities. Right. Yes, right. Busy. Hit the ground running is the new e-board. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So we'll move on. Uh, there are no public participation uh, sign-ups tonight for related to action items on the agenda. So we'll go to strategic area discussion items. Uh, begin with governance and Ben, please. All right, thank you. I, I did want to uh, recognize uh, as part of my update here uh, with governance, uh, part of the reason that we all uh, are able to be successful, myself as well as the board and members of the cabinet, is the uh, hard work um, of Julie Ockel as our administrative professional. Today's administrative professionals. Day, so we recognize Julie today. She she really picture. loves all of the uh, love that we shared today. Um, she didn't love the picture on Twitter and all that, but that's what makes it great. Um, but thank you, Julie, for all the work that you uh, you know you put in uh, to help this work well. I think you even went in the back to see if the, the stream was working or not. But um, thank you for all of your work on behalf of myself and the board. Speech. All right. Now, as long as those lottery tickets don't hit, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as the legislative update, um, 
the members of the board have been receiving some updates uh, through the, the work of uh, some of the associations and Birgit has helped pass those on. Um, I've given you some updates, but the real big piece right now is again, the whole budgeting process that I've been uh, talking about. The Senate um, put out their um, budget uh, appropriations. Uh, it was uh, kind of underwhelming, uh, but thankfully it's just part of the process. Uh, the House K-12 Appropriations Committee uh, did put out something that was uh, a bit more promising or maybe a lot more promising. Uh, they they have expressed continued support around uh, funding the retirement system, which would be a significant um, assistance with uh, school funding. Uh, it, it basically would make about a difference of about a thousand dollars a kid, a thousand dollars a student when you look at the foundation allowance. Um, but again, this is all part of the the process. Um, in your Friday updates, I'll send you a side by side so that you can see the, you know, the governor's proposal, the the Senate and the House. Uh, but in short, the pieces that you know most of us know and is most impactful. Uh, the House is basically looking at a three hundred dollar increase uh, per student, but within that is the um, the um, retirement um, payoff, which I just talked about, which may, would make a huge um, impact on schools, even though it's the uh, lesser of the three uh, proposals as far as the uh, pupil increase overall, it would make a tremendous difference. Uh, the Senate increase was 450, which um, is a little bit more than the governor's uh, recommendation, which was 435. Uh, one of the differences is the Senate uh, version doesn't do a whole lot with the categoricals and some of the other um, other ways that schools are funded. So um, again, it's just all part of the process. Uh, and John and I both talked about it. It's Getting, it's relatively early still because these all are just uh, starting to come out, but you'll see more action around those. But these are the baselines for each of those groups. Um, let's see. And then the other, the only other piece that I just wanted to remind everybody um, about is that next week is the spring behind the scenes at the Capitol. If it's something you're interested in, it was part of the MASB updates. Uh, so if you're interested in that, certainly the district would support your participation in that. Any questions at all? John's not here, so if you want to talk budget, we, we can go limited on it, but oh, we can talk about that if you want. Good? Okay. And then as far as um, we'll do strategic planning next, um, actually, no, I'll do COVID update. We'll follow the agenda. I apologize. Um, so as far as the COVID update, uh, again, I'll continue to do this through the month of May, uh, just for the sake of the school year and our, and our normal cadence. Um, but if you could move to the next slide, as you can see, the last the last three numbers uh, do reflect, uh, you know, an increase, as we all know, across the state. Uh, if you're if you're following it, the numbers have gone up. Um, our county also has gone up uh, in the positivity rate in the county is 13.3 percent um, as of April 24th. And um, again, um, meeting with the health department, we continue to get their uh, their understanding of the changes and whatnot. But Julie, if you can move to the next slide. Uh, just to be very clear, the health department is um, in a situation where you know we've learned so much more around COVID, and they they aren't making any additional recommendations based on the variant and the positivity rates. And as I've mentioned before, the the metric now is the uh, hospital capacity um, and um, uh, mortality rates. I think in um, the county, um, I think there has been four deaths in in the month. Um, too many, uh, but at the at any uh, rate, it's much less than what we were experiencing um, when there were other mitigation strategies put into place. So at this time, there's no uh, operational changes based on you know what we've been doing. Things have been uh, going along uh, well, and um, no no additional recommendations to consider from the health department. But I do still meet with them and another um, epidemiologist. Um, so basically, two meetings a month, or excuse me, a week um, that that I can continue to do so. Okay, any questions? Okay, and then the, the uh, third item here is the strategic plan discussion. Uh, we, we've all had an opportunity uh, to digest this. We brought this to the last uh, board meeting for, uh, for a first reading and some consideration. We had some 
uh, quality discussion at that time around the uh, the goals and the document that uh, MASB uh, put together to uh, reflect the work that we did from the retreat day all the way to uh, you know uh, our last board meeting. Um, as you noticed, I'm sure there was a couple of highlighted areas uh, in the uh, one-page document, the summary, and those were some uh, first-year objectives that we added, um, recognizing some of the work that um, needed, needs to be done and needs to be articulated in the plan. And, and this, this is just one example of that this is a con, um, continuing working document, and we'll continue to uh, add objectives as we uh, look to, uh, you know, meet the, um, you know, the end goals, the, the one-year goals, the five-year goal. Um, now that we have, if the board does move forward, uh, we do have these uh, goal statements um, that will help us do do our work and, and strive um, to make our great district even greater. Um, and I'm very confident that with the, the guidance that this document provides and the input that you guys have given, we will be able to do that. So, um, Any further discussions around that or any questions? Questions? Strategic plan. I don't have any questions, but I just wanted to thank my colleagues for the open discussion that we enjoyed at our last meeting. I appreciate that we had the opportunity to do that, and I have every faith that we're going to have the integrity of this process go smoothly as we launch forward into creating success and joy for our dragons. I, I would uh, recognize, too, that um, Susan uh, was unable to be here tonight, but have been able to follow up with her. She had some uh, thoughts around the strategic plan, and um, we've had some really great discussion and, and discussed, and uh, she has a level of comfort for sure uh, moving forward uh, with, our, with our plan as well. So um, we did talk about uh, having three uh, work sessions throughout the year. Um, we've identified uh, the, those time frames that we think make sense, the first one being uh, in August. Um, and so then we'll continue to, to build on uh, what we're doing and recognizing the work that we're doing and, and recognizing what our end goals are and, and have um, quality discussion during those work sessions to continue to progress forward. Just just to add to that, I, I uh, too had a conversation with Susan and uh, and I was going to share with you at the end of the meeting that she wasn't here with us tonight because she's a little under the weather and she was respecting all of us to stay healthy. But she has uh, expressed uh, at the previous meeting some um, concern about uh, how strenuous uh, the plan would be and, uh, and with the... Um, a work plan that comes forward being one that can be revised as achievement is is reached. I think she felt much comfortable with where we were at with that, and uh, and certainly wanted to share that tonight had she been here. If if I could just to be more clear too, so the the meeting that we're looking at because we've already established our meetings, we were looking at the August tenth meeting, um, I believe the November thirtieth meeting, and the May tenth meeting for those three that we've. Uh, de designated as uh, the work sessions. We'll do them at the normal time of 6.30 um, and, and move forward like would be a workshop type of a format, but we would do the 6.30 and the agenda item would be discussion around the strategic plan. So just to point out for any further? I, I don't have anything further. I think that we were at a stopping point with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are all good on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll move on to the policy committee report. And Bergen, please. Yes, good evening. Our policy committee meet, met last Wednesday with our NILA representative, Wayne. And in your packets tonight is the chunk of the board packet is policy. And I am going to go over it with you briefly tonight. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of every little one that we went through. And if you have any questions, stop me. And I'm sure... One of us on the committee would be able to answer the question. So in your packets, the legal alerts go from page 9 to 22. They provide an overview of issues going on within our state or on the national level that we need to be aware of and take into consideration. They are intended as general information only. They're not considered legal advice. So as you recall, um, this, still, this is a bit of a different format than Neil has had in the past, but what remains true is that anything in bold, green, and underlined is any wording that's added. Anything being eliminated is in red and stricken out. 
So on page 23, bylaws 0100, under the voting section, the option for allowing board members to be absent and voting with board president approval has been removed. This change is due to a law, or really the expiration of a law for, that allowed us to do this during the pandemic. Um, the pre-pandemic pre status of allowing only for board members on active military to duty to be accommodated for their ability to vote remotely is the only thing that stands. It then goes on to, to um, cover, as defined by law, in October, Dana Nessel, our Attorney General, issued an opinion. I'm sorry, she did that in February, not October. In February, she issued an opinion in which she reviews the Open Meetings Act, and she recognizes that it doesn't literally take into consideration the Americans with Disabilities Act, and she suggests that boards take this into consideration when they make such decisions regarding participation of board members and or the community, because denying that would be a violation of the law, and so we have to take that into consideration, even though Open Meetings Act doesn't spell that out. On page 26 is the update for policy 0167.3, public partici participation at board meetings, and the changes here are made due to decisions by the Sixth Circuit Court. Policy 3120 on page 28, employment of professional staff. This is one of a few times that a policy removes a great deal of language, making it more broad, and in this case, it removes a language, a lot of it, the language regarding highly qualified it indicates professional staff must present proof that they have the appropriate certificates or are in the process of receiving those certifications. On page 30 is policy 6114, spending of federal funds. Due to the increased amounts of federal funds districts are receiving, rules for expenditures were expanded to meet the federal guidelines for spending on equipment and other capital expenditures. Page 34, policy 6152, student fees, fines, and supplies. This updated policy allows for the paying of fees and other charges online. There's also an option for homeless students to not pay fees or fines. Page 35 is policy 7450, property inventory. This update adds a minimum of every two years where we are required to inventory federal property. Page 37, policy 8310, public records. It adds language that under the address confidential uh, under the Address Confidentiality Program Act, we cannot give out the address of a student or an employee. On page 39, policy 8320, personnel files. This update adds that an employee's address may not be given out without written authorization. It also states that medical certifications, insurance forms, and requests for leave shall be maintained in a confidential file and adds language for the retention of personnel files. Page 41, policy 8330, student records, adds that we must provide student district email address to military recruiters if it's available. That ends up section 136.1. 36.2 begins on page 47. On page 50 to 57 are your legal alerts. Starting on page 58 is policy 616, staff dress and grooming. This is a brand new policy for the administrator section. Page 59, policy 5511. Dress and grooming from the student policies has language changes to match Title IX and directs staff to enforce the dress code in a non-discriminatory and uniform manner. Page 60 is policy 6110. Grants funds adds the latest language regarding Edgar, which will need to be, which is needed for our upcoming audits and ESSER and GEAR, for ESSER and GEAR um, dollars. Page 63, policy 6114, cost principles, spending federal funds, adds the latest language regarding Edgar, language involved, changes for telecommunications and video surveillance services, and it complies with the Davis-Bacon prevailing wage for contracts in excess of $2,000. And last but not least, if you're still awake, policy, six, policy 6325 on page 67, procurement of federal grants and funds, and the changes are similar to the previous policy I just mentioned. Any questions? Good work, Birgit. Yeah, no kidding. Because that was a long meeting. And, and just, <laughs> it was a lot really of reading. Um, so um, it, that's our first reading for tonight. We're not voting on it tonight. I will not do that overview again in the second reading and, unless somebody's just begging me for it. Um, so uh, any questions? Email Ben. <laughs> <laughs>
Great idea, Bergen. No, I, I did ask Ben this, uh, and if you could elaborate, that there were two different sections in there, and one was dated September 2021. So if you could, you know, explain the cadence of of, of where we're at, and that we didn't fall, whether we fell behind on anything, or if this is just the, the catch up. You know, if you could give us the the background of what of of what's going on, why we saw two updates in this packet. They were they were closely together. We had a Neola representative change. Um, um, and then with COVID, everything has just kind of gotten out of cadence um, with with everybody. Uh, so we brought them both together uh, to try to be efficient in moving these forward. And we didn't miss anything by 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 not by waiting until t today to take our yeah. next meeting to take action. Right, and a lot of these are laws, you know. So right. we know them, and then we formalize them into policies. Um, it, one of the things that I do want to um, recognize is the the remote meeting access. So we have a board policy currently with uh, it's uh, one six two point one that references our um, Board of Education operating procedures. So as we go through and revise that, we need to keep that in mind. Um, this, this policy, the change about um, remote participation, um, it's not just about voting, but it's the actual participation and so on. So I just wanted to surface that so we don't forget that when we um, do make changes to the operating procedures that we have to make the change because it's not directly related to this, but it is a peripheral peripheral damage, so to speak, uh, with work that's got to be done. Thank you. Any questions for Berga? <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's the authority here. <laughs> if I do, they might have to come later. <laughs> After all that, I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. That's a lot of work. Thanks to the committee. That's a lot of work. So move ahead to uh, board self-assessment committee report and Berga. And Berga. Looking at me again. <laughs> so we met this past Friday and we discussed our charge was to retweak the board goals again and those are in your packet. Um, I'm gonna try to catch up with pages here. Um, yeah, it's having a... It's <laughs> slow to catch up. It wants up. you to stop talking. <laughs> right. So... Um, the, the changes are, we added the word strongly to the third bullet point of the second objective as to strongly recommend. And uh, the third objective was giving us the opportunity to have input on advocacy for education among the school, on the, the board and the district. And that was the objective on, for the third objective on the second bullet point, we did change that, that the board will provide current legislative information for constituents to read and advocate for. Um, just allowing us to have that input and bringing it back to you at this format to see if that's an acceptable form for that. Um, one of the uh, deals in here is to each workshop will include one hour of professional development from MASB. I just wanted to point out that there is only one more workshop on our calendar for this calendar year, and that occurs on September 14th. The next one after that's February 22nd, and I think next year only has two as well. So there's not a bunch that we have to plan for, and we had discussed one that OCSBA hosted um, in February uh, or March, governance behaviors that impact student achievement, and it was excellent, and I would love to see that come in February. and. Um, I will email Scott Morrell from, from MASB and see if he's available to present that, if that works, if you're, no, everybody great. is in favor of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, that way that's on the plan and there isn't anything else to plan for that until next year's workshop. And just, I reviewed all, all of the calendars from last year and this year. And so last year we had three workshops, this year's two, and as far as I can tell, there's two next year. So we'll get to, to squeeze in a couple, but it's not like we're, we've got to do a lot of planning in this round. Questions, comments? I'll just add to that, Birgit. Um, you know, one of the things we were discussing last time was, um, you know, we're strongly encouraging new board members to take um, CBA 101. Um, and we had meant, or I had mentioned it last time, that, you know, there are some boards that um, say that their, their board members, in order to hold an officer position, have to take all the 100s, and we had discussed that, but decided not to bring that forward at this point. But you know, did talk about maybe in the future, um, instead of saying all the hundreds, um, 
new you know board members should take CBA 101 at a minimum in order to hold an officer position. So just kind of wanted to put that out there for you know you guys to consider and if that you know we didn't want to change it radically because you, you know this is the second you know the draft of it and we we didn't feel like it was appropriate to do it at this point but because to your point Jake yeah. we we can't make yeah. people other, do it. The other sign is if a board wants to make that, if a future board wants to elect a brand new member who is to, to be their president or an officer, and there could be a situation where you, you don't have four experienced board members, so right. it, it's, it's much like the strongly encouraged language there. We have to be careful not to be stating things that we can't enforce because then you, these, you lose credibility if they're not. So the, the way these are written, they're very good because mm -hmm. this is what we believe and we're encouraging everybody to do this, but it doesn't, it doesn't put a mandate on any future board to act in a certain way. Right. Now, and, and one of the things that um, it was actually Steve Berger and I that we talked about was just, you know, obviously encouraging, you know, loads of education, right? I mean, we're in the business of education and we expect Ben and Heidi and, you know, our teachers and everyone else to do professional development. So why wouldn't we expect, you know, the same of the seven of us up here? So as far as number three, the second bullet point, what avenue were you guys looking at as far as uh, providing legislative information? I know you guys had some discussions around mm -hmm. that last time. Did you guys talk about that? I'm sorry. Can you... Uh, the vehicle? Yeah, there was discussion around the website and updating yes. the website. And so I just wondered if you guys talked about that further or if that was to be determined yet. We did have some minor, some discussion around it. And, you know, taking your advice, we broadened the language, I would say, just so we're not putting work on Mark per se. And so we. You know, we talked about how MASB does a really good job with the news from the Capitol or things, sure. you know, so maybe we could incorporate that, you know, somehow, okay. somewhere, just even if it's a link or things of that nature. But we, that's, you know, I think we need further discussion on that, unless you okay. had thoughts, Berget. Right, yeah, something, we definitely want it to be simple. We don't want to recreate the wheel, and we know there's a multitude of organizations whether it's the lobbyists from Oakland Schools or MASB or any of, you know, your connections right. or the K-12 Alliance, right, right. that we present links that people can access under our legislative So we're thinking to use button. the website. Yeah, basically. for sure. I don't know okay. what else to do. What else right. would sure, be. that's why I just wanted to make sure. We, we currently do some, some updating and whatnot, so we'll, we'll work together then to figure out so yeah. that we're not putting up the same for um, sure. material and making it Yeah, we did available. look at it, and that's why we thought it would, be, it would be nice for the board to have a little bit of input on that. Great. Okay, thank you. That helps. I'd like to go back to the professional development for a second. Um, in, oh, in over many years, we've had boards that were honor boards mm -hmm. that had received uh, uh, honors for uh, their investment in professional development. And I know that things change, uh, board members change, commitments change uh, in personal lives, and sometimes it's difficult to do that. but. I would hope that in the future we consider something more uh, than what we're seeing in here about an hour uh, of PD, that maybe we, uh, to enable us to get better at what we do and to be uh, focused on the most topical areas at any given time, that maybe we look to have a more strenuous PD that takes place here where we bring it here rather than have the extra steps of going someplace else. And uh, we did extinguish some of that challenge with uh, when we were in COVID with uh, uh, remote, uh, but I don't, I don't foresee that we're going to see a lot of remote. So maybe mm -hmm. it's something that we want to talk about in the future. Mm -hmm. How do we develop a greater uh, element of PD that's here to ensure that we all hear it at the same time and that it's the most topical area at any given time? So. That I just offer that. Thank you. For future consideration. Much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Any others? All right. Thank you. Thanks for all your work on that as well. That's, uh, that makes us better. We'll move on to student achievement. And Heidi, please. All right. Good evening. 
Um, tonight, I would like to give um, an update on summer school. We have, I, I know the weather is not here and it's, you're saying summer, but yes, we are in um, summer planning mode. And so elementary summer school um, program, uh, there is no cost. It will be located at Orion Oaks for grades K through five. Um, this one is uh, invitation only. Right now we have 281 students signed up for the program. Um, it will run for four weeks, and um, right now we do have a wait list, um, and so we are working through that. So we have had great response um, to that program. In addition, our Elementary Dragon Tales Book Club is coming back for those who want enrichment. Uh, this was very successful last year, so we are running it again this year. The Virtual Book Club meets with a teacher one time a week for four weeks. Uh, the fee based at $30, um, and students get to keep the books for students in uh, grades one through five. And then all elementary students in grades uh, DK through three will receive books to take home for the summer. Uh, this is um, at no cost to the student. This cost is being covered by the district. We've done that in the past uh, during COVID, and that was a huge hit as well. So we will be continuing that. All elementary uh, school media centers, but Blanche, but Blanche Sims and Stadium uh, will be open weekly throughout the whole summer. Uh, due to bond construction, uh, Blanche Sims and Stadium will have one hour at the Orient Township Library. And then middle level summer school uh, program, that is no cost. It will be located at Weather, Weber because all of our secondary buildings will uh, be busy hopefully receiving um, all new furniture. Uh, registration is currently open for our middle school summer school program. That will also run uh, the same time, four weeks, July 11th through August 4th. And then we will be offering uh, credit recovery and credit co forward for the high school students uh, via our Pearson Connexus virtual program. Um, credit recovery is at no cost to the student. Uh, credit forward is fee-based. Uh, this program will run for eight weeks and registration will be starting soon, so information will be coming out about that. So lots going out um, this summer with our programming. And again, through parent communication, we've been putting out a lot of different opportunities um, through organizations surrounding us as well. And then I would uh, like to give a shout out um, Mark had mentioned this, our robotics uh, team with uh, Sharon Spencer, one of our teachers, but we also have two parents that have been strongly committed to this program for many years and have really um, grown the program to what it is today, and that's Mr. and Mrs. Stone. So I wanted to make sure that they were recognized um, because they have put countless hours, have, have been dedicated and passionate about this program for years, and it's been great to see it grow um, year after year. So kudos to Sharon and Mr. and Mrs. Stone. And then um, leading on to uh, Bond, today uh, we had a meeting for the secure entry for Walden and Oakview. Um, those designs are pretty much complete. Um, they were pretty simple projects. Those will not occur until next year, um, but the designs are um, almost finished. And then um, also for the bond, we have had a few marquees that we are pulling up in the project schedule. Uh, Walden, Oakview, and Pine Tree uh, will be moved up um, due to those marquees um, being um, damaged by winds. Um, so it really is not cost effective to have the marquees fixed when we're eventually getting new ones. So um, just so you're aware that those three will be moving up. So we're excited about that. And then um, again, construction continues as you see uh, Blanche Sims Stadium and Scripps. And um, so that will continue throughout the summer. And, um, and then we'll be getting, as I said, new furniture for all of our secondary. So a lot still occurring with the bond. Good. Questions for Heidi? Just, Heidi. Heidi, uh, you had mentioned, I think, that the elementary summer school is invitation only. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how many were invited? Uh, approximately 600. Okay. And, and with that number that's already registered, did I hear you say there's a wait list already? Yes. Is that, um, and 
a staff need? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are the 281 uh, all levels or just elementary? That's just elementary. And then how many do you know on middle school? Middle school uh, just opened, so we have about 10, I think, as of today. But, but we've invited, open. but yes. Yeah. yeah it, yep. And then high school hasn't quite opened yet. Right. So we're expecting, I know that the elementary program, I think, is already up, I want to say, about 30 from last year. So our, progr our summer school program has grown um, over the past few years, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, Heidi, are those signs that we're talking about, um, are they all the same? Yes, oh. like, like what you see uh, at Carpenter, yep. Weber, the cool. new marquees. That's awesome. I know the, we had talked about that. And yes, I can't. To get them oh, those are and putting so. the yellow on them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jake said, what's a marquee? So I said a sign. That's why we were talking to him while you were talking. I'm wanting to make sure that I was like, marquee, is that the thing on the, like, when yes. you said the wind got it, I'm like, oh, did it blow the name off the side of the building or? Oh, we yeah. We have to use smaller words for Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's our size. <laughs> and yes, and the new ones are <laughs> digital. I don't know. <laughs> so that's even better yet. I'm just playing, Jake. So. <laughs> All right, any other questions? <laughs> Hearing none. Thank you. Hey. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we'll go on to human resources. Rick. Oh, yeah. oh, Rick. 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 It's not me. It's Daniel. Uh, uh, it's me. Um, curriculum committee, which consists of myself, Birgit, Jake, and of course Heidi, um, met last week. And um, the big discussion items were um, the staff is receiving. Um, Suicide risk training, um, it kind of piggybacks onto some other um, threat assessment training that they've already received, and, um, you know, they're deep in that, and we know how important that is to... Just certain staff. Just certain staff, not all staff, let me be clear. <laughs> um, mostly principals and the um, social workers, things of that nature. And like I said, we all know how important, you know, th those, those issues are right now. So um, Heidi's doing a great job with making sure our staff are trained and have the tools necessary. Um, something you'll actually be seeing <laughs> coming to um, the um, May 11th board meeting is um, Michelle Curitan went, I believe, to um, a presentation and came back with the idea of offering our students a global diversity seal on um, their diploma when they graduate, and they there's some dirt, and you'll see it. I don't want to give too much away, but you'll see it. Um, they with certain taking certain classes and doing some other outside work when they graduate, they will have a seal of global diversity right on their diploma. And what I think is really cool about this is. Um, this is not something that every district has, and it's going to be something that's kind of unique to Lake Orion, and I think that's amazing, and, you know, just promotes more um, students, you know, going out and seeing things and, you know, whatnot, so I think that'll be really exciting to hear about that on May 11th, and then um, <laughs> Heidi brought us the third quarter update on the strategic plan, and I do want to recognize Heidi on this because she puts a lot of work into this, and she always says her documents aren't pretty. But let me tell you what they are. They are detailed, and they have a lot of information, and you can see all the hard work Heidi puts into it. Um, and we get to see it, and I know it's in your guys's, um, I believe it's in the board packet as well, and I just want to recognize you for that because you do such a good job of keeping us up to date and letting us know what's going on. So thank you. <laughs> that, that's it. That's all. <laughs> all right, thanks, Danielle. Questions for Danielle? All right. Thanks for your good work on that. Yeah. We'll go to Rick. Nothing further. All right. And uh, we'll move on <coughs> to finance and... Uh, you're our designated finance. Uh, I am. I am. I'm happy to address the uh, the items. Uh, International Academy. Um, the International Academy budget was surfaced last uh, time by John. This is a second reading. Um, as we talked about at the last meeting, we do recommend um, approving that to uh, continue to provide that for our students. We didn't have any further questions uh, to surface or that we got surfaced for answers. So. Assuming we're all right with that. And then the other item um, is the um, the high school pool replacement filter bid. Um, I'm sure you've uh, read some of the background, but it is the original uh, filter that's being replaced. Um, and the uh, the funds used for that replacement are the sinking fund dollars. Um, so uh, we will be moving forward with that. Anybody have any questions around that? 
that, that was on schedule for the sinking fund, correct? Wes, do you, the question, I, uh, Wes is here just in case, so I wasn't here when the sinking fund schedules were initially uh, put out, but Wes, did you hear the question? Yes, um, it, was, it was part of a, a lot of things. We had a, we had a earmark for mechanical upgrades right. in the sinking fund, and this would be one of those pieces. Yeah, I thought it was on that list, the greater list, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much on schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. All right. Those are the those were the items that I was going to address during this section. And questions on financial report directed to John. <laughs> so we did we did request any any uh, questions regarding the financial report uh, in advance. We didn't have any. I know he does a great job of laying everything out. Um, he's very clear with that. So. Good. Right. Does anybody have any questions? No, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we'll move on to action items. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on, I'm out there. <laughs> oh, the consent agenda is really short. <laughs> oh, wow. Is that okay? Go on. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> We're just 7.30. I know. <laughs> All right. With a five minute break. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? I move that we approve the following consent agenda items. Approve minutes from the April 13th regular the April 19th Curriculum Committee and the April 20th, 2022 Policy Committee meetings. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you very much. Consent agenda is approved. I have a motion to approve the strategic plan. I move. I move go ahead. Thank you. I move to approve the proposed district Mission, vision, belief, and goal statements as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. <laughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The strategic plan is approved. We did it. We got there. Yes. All right. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> We have a motion to approve the board goals. I move to approve the proposed Board of Education goals as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The board goals are approved. We have a motion to approve the certified new hire. I move to approve a certified new hire as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Certified new hire is approved. Jake? Welcome, Deidre. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have a motion to adopt the International Academy FY 2023 budget resolution. I move to... Go ahead. <laughs> I move to adopt the resolution to approve the International Academy fiscal year 2023 budget as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Roll, roll call. call. Oh, is the roll call correct? Mr. Spott? Yes. Mr. Dracos? Yes. Mr. Kristen? Yes. Mr. Singer? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Weedman? Yes. Thank you. The International Academy. FY 2023 budget resolution is adopted by Lake Orion. We have a motion to authorize bid award for Lake Orion High School pool replacement filter. I move to authorize administration to execute contracts for replacement of the high school pool filtration system with Summit Electric in the amount of $59,885 and Aquatic Source LLC in the amount of $560,560 and allocate a contingency allowance and construction management fee of $102,069 for a total project recommendation of $722,514 as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The bid award for the Lake Orion High School pool replacement filter is authorized. So we'll move to public participation for other non-action items and topics. And we have one person signed up this evening, uh, Val Hale. I believe she left. Thanks, Did she leave? <laughs> yep, she left. Okay. okay. All right. So that being said, we'll move on to recap and next steps. 
Uh, one item uh, as far as uh, next steps is we will work to get the strategic plan uh, updated and Mark will do his magic uh, on the website and start creating uh, documents as we move forward uh, and we will, we will get moving to uh, address the goal statements. Thank you. All right. Closing comments, Rick. Nothing further. Good evening. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, just a couple reminders. Uh, June 21st, LOEF golf outing. We're aiming for a sellout and we're getting close. So if you've not gotten your team and tickets, you better hurry. And, um, and then just another shout out uh, for the spring musical next week for the high school. It's going to be a Thank great you. show. Ben? Just want to acknowledge uh, uh, the behaviors of the social contract. I just I really want to commend everybody for the last you know few weeks. Just really having an open two way communication around your needs with the um, the strategic plan. It allowed us to uh, feel comfortable as we move forward, and I think we're going to be in a in a great spot. And appreciate your trust in the work that we're going to do with that. Also, want to do um, acknowledge, and I know it was brought up a couple times, but uh, DECA and the robotics and and their successes, and you know, at the the national level, and it's uh, just really commendable. There's so many great things that our students do, that our staff does, and those are just a couple of shining examples um, of our current day. And next week is uh, Staff Appreciation Week, and we're looking forward to uh, getting out into the buildings and uh, expressing our appreciation to staff. Uh, but it's also a great time for uh, community and students to uh, recognize the staff members and the great work that they do um, in a time that the profession uh, it has been very challenging and, and our staff has really um, shined and really created opportunities that uh, our students will remember forever. So thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Steve. Thanks, Tim. Uh, I wish to acknowledge um, and thank Mark. You mentioned the mental awareness um, issues and seminars are available and I want to commend uh, Mr. Rick Garnett. He made our teachers, everybody aware of this uh, issue pre-COVID, and I'm glad that nationally and locally, for example, the state bar, the local bar, and uh, national, everybody's talking and encouraging people to just be aware. And um, that's it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Steve. I want to tell everybody a little story. Um, I have a pizza place in Oxford, and um, there is a group at Oakview, which is called Web, which I believe where everybody belongs is what it stands for. And it was kind of close to my heart because uh, my daughter was in the first year that it started, and then it was, you know, it was going gangbusters, and then uh, COVID happened. But um, the leader of that, Ms. Martin, reached out to me because one of the students wanted to do something for the Oxford High School teachers. And... Um, so they did a fundraiser and they raised a bunch of money and they ended up buying pizza and salads and bread for all of the Oxford teachers last week. And I just, I think it's very cool and um, they should be commended. I actually, we're trying to put together a video because we got a bunch of video of it and that we couldn't get it together right. So I'll get that to Mark so you guys can see it, but um, just awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing that, and thank you for assisting them. We appreciate awesome. that. Way to go, Scott. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Danielle? Yep, just um, this past weekend, I haven't really had a lot of opportunity to spend time watching much of our spring sports, but this weekend, I actually spent Saturday and Sunday um, at our lovely facilities in Lake Orion and watched my very first boys lacrosse game. I've never seen lacrosse in my life. Um, and so thank you for the parents that I sat with for being patient with me and <laughs> explaining the game and what was happening. Um, that, that, was, that was an amazing sport to watch. And then on Sunday, I spent time watching our varsity um, and JV boys baseball teams take on Midland. And once again, thank you for all the parents and the coaches. And um, apparently there's a tradition with Midland because they travel so far that um, we feed them um, lunch because once you travel two and a half hours, you might as well. So um, they invited me to stay for lunch, so I just want to thank everybody and encourage, you know, everybody to go out and, you know, go to the theater and watch the upcoming show and get out there. Hopefully, we'll have some nicer weather so we can all get out and watch some sporting events. And, yeah, that's all. Have a great night. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Jake? Uh, I want to thank everybody's involvement in the strategic plan process. It was such a long time coming, and, and what we did is 
to value each other as we went through it, that we, we had to collaborate and come up with a common vision, and we all challenged each other to make sure that this is the best, and I, and I really do appreciate the fact that we're able to do this and, and, and turn, the, turn it into a community vision and hand it over to the administration to, to set these objectives and, and, and keep everything on the right track. So that's, that's a sign of the, the, the board had, a, had that task in front of us and we were able to accomplish it. I also want to congratulate you know, the groups, the, the DECA and uh, robotics for what they did and to all the, the student uh, thespians, break a leg. Thank you. Birgit, please. So I want to start out by acknowledging Danielle. Um, tonight, even as we speak, there's an online award celebration from MASB, which obviously we're not at home enjoying. So um, I, it, it's a literally a, a pre-recorded announcement of the names and recognition. And I, as the Region 8 representative, I did read the names for Region 8. There's a lot of them. We've, we're a very active region, and Danielle's one of them. She achieved her Level 1 award and the Award of Merit. So congratulations on that, Danielle. celebrate her again in um, June when OCSBA hosts our, um, our annual awards banquet. Um, so hopefully you guys will come, come and celebrate her then too. I also wanted to let you all know that Oakland Schools Board of Education has a candidate filing deadline for Friday, May 6th for anybody who's interested in running for that board. That board is elected by school boards. So all of the trustees in Oakland County have a resolution, each district gets one vote. We will be doing that in May, um, passing that resolution and casting that vote in June. Um, but then OCSB will be hosting a candidate forum because there are two seats up, but three people have already filed. And that forum is, of course, on a Wednesday night of our next board meeting. It will be recorded. As the secretary, I'll be sending that out to you the next day. So I just wanted you to have a heads up for that because then when we pass that resolution, that'll be give us the opportunity to do that at the next meeting and to do our duties for that particular uh, requirement. And that happens to also be the uh, election night, it happens to be learning options graduation. So we'll have to figure that out. There's just enough time if you get there right away and cast the vote for the board and get back here for But So somebody will have to be, we'll talk about that in May. The fastest driver. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you all know, or perhaps just realized, in case you haven't been paying attention, today's Administrative Assistance Day. Julie, um, we're so fortunate to have you. You're amazing. You're incomparable. I um, hope you appreciate our, our small token of gifts because we sure appreciate you. No one is more cherished in the world than someone who lightens the burden of another. Julie, you're amazing, and I... I Speaking for everybody, we just, you make us look good. We appreciate you more than you know. I know we act sometimes like a bunch of kindergartners, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. So, and, and to just carry on with Ben's, next week's an opportunity to celebrate our staff. And I want to encourage my colleagues to reach out to their board buddy buildings and help celebrate the staff there. All right. That's all I got. All right. Thank you, Berga. Uh, finally, I, I'd just like to... Uh, thank all the people who were involved with making the strategic plan happen. Uh, this has been a very long and coming, uh, the refresh of our strategic plan, and uh, one that I, I know all of us have been very interested to get on track and get it started. And uh, we're, we're at a new place now, and uh, with the leadership we have in the district and a great plan, I expect some great things come that we didn't even anticipate. So great things are happening and greater things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to mention is that in, in a number of meetings I've been in recently, uh, I, I just I want to uh, express my thanks to the board for their uh, ability to listen to other people and analyze and be open-minded to all the possibilities that that when we discuss some tough issues, I think people have stepped up. And I really, I just want to take a moment to express my appreciation for that. And, uh, and we miss Susan tonight. Uh, she'll be back. But uh, I think uh, 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 she shared some things with us in advance, so certainly sure her voice was heard tonight. So on that, we are adjourned. Thank you, and good night.